back when we first started talking about line integrals, we talked about having a closed curve. So here's some closed curve C. And we thought about going all the way around the curve and finding the outward normal to that curve. So we have our outward normal. I'll call it little n. I know before when we talked about a normal to a curve, we called it capital N, the unit normal. Um, but the unit normal isn't necessarily the one that's outward from a closed curve. But anyway, we're going around this curve, and at every location, we're measuring the dot product of the vector field with the curve. So we're, we're measuring f dotted with the unit normal, the outward normal, sorry, to the curve. And we're going all on that curve and summing up f dot n times the length. So what this f dot n is measuring, that's basically the component of f in the direction of the outward normal. So it's measuring how much does the flow of this fluid tend to be going um, out through the boundary. So if we total it all up, we're going to get the net flow in or out of the boundary. You can see in this vector field, we have places where um, f dot n is going to be negative because f is in an opposite direction from n, so or the angle between f and n is more than 90, so we're going to get a, a negative value for f and n. But then in other places, we're going to have a positive value for f dot n. So if we here's f and there's n, we'll have a positive value in regions like this. What we're going to get when we sum all this up, f dot n ds is going to be the total flow out across the boundary. Now to actually compute that, we had our vector field. Let's say it has components m and n. And we had our parameterization. So we have um, our position as a function of time for time between some starting and some ending time. This is what draws our, our loop c. So to do this integral, what we would do is we would calculate the unit normal and do f dot n. And then for a little bit of arc length, Let's see, we're going to integrate from a to b. So we're going to do this integral in t. To calculate arc length, we're going to take dt times the speed, which is the length of our prime. So rate times time is distance. So this is, this is our little ds. Now actually, from our parameterization, if we have a curve, if we're going around the curve counterclockwise, then we can use our parameterization to figure out which direction is the outward normal. So we know the tangent. Um, the unit tangent is going to be the velocity divided by the speed. So that's going to be if our parameterization has a component x of t and y of t, then that's going to be x prime of t comma y prime of t divided by the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. So that's going to be the unit tangent. Now, to find a vector perpendicular, if you're in two dimensions, it's easy to find a normal. In fact, it's easy to find two normals. The first normal, if you flip two component, flip the two components and just change the sign on the second, that gives you one normal. Let's see. The length stays the same if you just flip the components. So, so there's one normal. We didn't necessarily have to change the sign on the second. We could have changed the sign on the first instead. And this would also give us a normal. You can see if you take the dot product of n1 with t, you're going to have basically um, x prime y prime minus x prime y prime. So the dot product of n1 with t will be 0. Same thing here. You'll get minus x prime y prime plus x prime y prime. So these are two normals. And we can actually tell which one is the outward normal if we look at the curve. If we're going around the curve counterclockwise, then at, say, this location, this is the direction of the unit tangent. That's going to be x prime comma y prime. And the outward normal is going to be go, is, needs to have a positive x component and a positive y component. So in this region, the y prime is positive because the vector is going up, but the x prime is negative because the vector is going back. So if we look at these two, the one that is going out and up that has positive x component and positive y component is this one, what I called n1. Okay, so this gives us our outward normal. You can check that.
that always gives us the outward normal no matter where we're at as long as we're going around the curve counterclockwise. If we happen to be going it around clockwise, then we just change and use this outward normal. And this will be the outward normal now if you're going counter or you're going clockwise around the curve. So if you're going counterclockwise, you just use this one. That's the most common case. But the only difference between changing the direction is just changing the sign. So if we have a counterclockwise parameterization, we know that this is n1. So if we plug that in here, we get the integral from a to b of f, which is mn, and then um, dotted with n, which is y prime comma minus x prime, all over the length here, which is also the speed. And then we have the speed coming up again in order to convert ds, a little bit of arc length, into a little change in time. So we have the speed times dt, and those cancel. So by the time we write this out then, let me carry this down here, we have the integral from a to b of my prime dt minus n x prime dt. And y prime dt, that's uh, the differential, right? If you take the rate of change of y times the change with respect to t times the change in t, you get the change in y. So a lot of times we just write this as m dy minus n dx. This works if you have a counterclockwise um, parameterization. You can just set this up to calculate the flux. On the other hand, if you have a clockwise parameterization, then this will just give you the negative flux. So just change the sign when you're done. This is this way works for counterclockwise parameterizations. Now Green's theorem tells us that there is um, the flux form of Green's theorem tells us that there's a connection between the flux around a tiny box and um, summing all those up and the flux around the entire region. So if you have a tiny box, that's delta x by delta y, and you calculate the flux out of that tiny box, so you go around that tiny box and you get the outward normal and you just at every location measure f dotted with the outward normal, whatever f may be. There's our outward normal, there's our vector f. This f looks fairly constant, but it need not be. Okay, so the flux out of this tiny box is roughly equal to um, this quantity, dm dx plus dn dy times the area of the box. So if this is the flux um, and this is the area, then this number must be the flux per unit area. So flux per unit area, we could call that the flux density. It's a measure of how much um, flux is there. Right? So it's also Let's see, so yeah, so that's the first idea in the flux form of Green's theorem. And the second idea is that if you have two adjoining boxes and you take the flux out of the first plus the flux out of the second, the flux out of the one on the left is the opposite of the flux into the one on the right. And so if you take this, the flux out of this one plus the flux out of that one, that flux on the shared boundary just cancels and you get flux out of the entire region. So if you add on a couple more boxes and take the flux from those, then the flux on the on the shared boundaries cancel and you just get the flux out of the entire region. Okay, so first we have this flux density. So the flux out of a box of, of area delta x by delta y or rectangle of area delta x by delta y is roughly this times the area of the triangle. And then, let's see, the sum of flux out of adjoining boxes, or maybe I should say rectangles, is the flux out of the combined region. So our idea is a lot like the circulation form of Green's theorem. We have some curve C, 
and um, we're going to partition the interior up into tiny little rectangles here. So we're just going to slice and slice and slice and slice and we'll calculate the flux out of each teensy tiny box in the interior and add them all up and if we do that we know that when we add up the flux from these adjoining boxes we'll just get the flux out of the entire region, right? The flux through our curve C. So this is what the flux form of Green's theorem says. If you want to do a flux integral, so you want to go over a curve and and you're going to be integrating f dot n ds or we said that that's equivalent to integrating m dy minus n dx so from time a to time b in order to find the flux out of the shared boundary what you can do is just go throughout the the interior region adding up dm dx plus dn dy times dx dy or that dx dy is a tiny bit of area so you could call that whole thing da so this says you, you need to evaluate this line integral that would give you the outward flux, but one way to do it is to do a double integral instead. You're just summing up the flux out of all these interior boxes. When you do that, you get the flux out of the combined region when you're done. So that's, that's the flux form of Green's theorem. So, um, so here's, here's the statement of Green's theorem. The outward flux of a field across a simple closed curve C equals the double integral of the divergence of F over the region R enclosed by C. Remember when we had this function, the divergence um, of F, we could remember it using that del operator. The divergence of F is del dotted with F. So remember in two dimensions the del operator is just the derivative with respect to X, the derivative with respect to Y, dotted with MN, which gives us dm dx. The dot product gives us a scalar, so we get dm dx, dm dx plus dn dy. So this is really just integrating up the divergence of f dx dy. Now we see why we called that the divergence, right? Because this is measuring how does the how does the um, flow tend to diverge out through the boundary of a tiny box. So the divergence of f is the flux density or the flux out of a tiny box for our particular vector field. Let's look at an example of using this. So we have this vector field and we want to find the flux of this vector field out of this triangle. We'll start by sketching our region here. Bounded by y equals 0, that's the x-axis. And x equals 1 is this vertical line here. And y equals x is this line at 45 degrees. <clears throat> okay. So we, we could uh, describe this region pretty easily. We'll just say x is between 0 and 1. In other words, this region is between the y-axis and this vertical line. And then given an x value, the y value starts at 0 and climbs until it hits this line. When it hits this line, the y value will be equal to the x value. So those are the inequalities that describe that particular region. And Green's theorem says if you want to find the flux, so the integral of f dot n, sorry, ds, you just have to integrate over this region, which would be from 0 to 1 and from 0 to x, the divergence. Now, the divergence of f, or we can remember it as the del operator dotted with f, is going to be the derivative of the first component with respect to x, which is 1, plus the derivative of the second component with respect to y, which is minus 2y. So we have to go around integrating 1 minus 2y dy dx. So we do that, we get the antiderivative is y minus y squared between 0 and x. I'm going to integrate that from 0 to 1 dx. Let's see, so we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus x squared dx. And the antiderivative there is 1 half x squared minus 1 third x cubed between 0 and 1, which just gives us 1 half minus a third, which is 1 sixth.